Ocean's uplands are unique man-made environments. Most landowners and managers receive payments to manage the land, but with changes in agricultural subsidies, many land managers are having to make very tough decisions over their stock, and climate change could add to these pressures. As we move towards a low carbon economy, what if the top priority for our hill farmers and land managers became tackling climate change and protecting biodiversity rather than managing the land for agriculture? Currently, grazing livestock and carrying out controlled burning on Britain's hills prevents scrubby vegetation such as young birch trees and gorse coming in. Without this management, some areas, probably the least productive, highest and most remote land, would be left to go wild. If you took the sheep off on these hillsides, uh, what starts to happen first is you get, to, obviously the grass starts to grow, and then you'll get the, uh, the hawthorn starts to germinate and grow, and then they get higher and higher, and then you get what is what we call a scrub. Rewilding in the upland environment could lead to more areas becoming dominated by heather at the expense of grass. Even species such as grouse who depend on heather to nest and feed would not benefit from such a rewilding of the uplands because although there could be an increase in the amount of heather, most of it would probably be too old for grouse to be able to eat. And in the drier upland areas, Removing land management could lead to an invasion of scrubby vegetation and eventually forest. You'd lose all the contrast of different fields and different vegetations. You'd land up with like a monoculture of sort of scrub land. And then you'd lose all the, all the ground nesting birds that live on these hills. Climate change will also present further challenges to these species, forcing them to move further north and higher up hills to maintain the sort of living conditions they're used to. Grazing by livestock, be it cattle or sheep, can have real benefits for, for habitats and for species. There can be problems with overgrazing, but there can also be problems with undergrazing, and I guess to have a diversity of effects is, is probably best for wildlife and best for our landscape, and to support that range of, of different impacts is probably what we want to aim towards. However, that isn't to say that there wouldn't be any positive consequences of letting Britain's hills go wild. Many of our uplands are degraded at the moment. They, there are areas of bare peat, for example. And to some, that might seem a natural erosive process, but actually some of it's come about because of the way we've managed the land and because of the way we've polluted the atmosphere. So we need to think about this, because if we've got lots of bare eroding peat, that peat isn't taking carbon out of the atmosphere. In this map of the Peak District National Park, the darker green areas show where these peat soils are absorbing the most carbon. The red shows where we're losing carbon. If we were to stop grazing and burning and leave the land to go wild, we can see how the red areas disappear because the soil would start to absorb and store carbon from the atmosphere. In areas which are less likely to be abandoned altogether, it may even be possible to actively manage the land for carbon, blocking drainage ditches and gullies and revegetating bare and eroding peat can prevent huge amounts of carbon being lost from the hills. So by looking after our peatlands and by investing money in the uplands and the peatlands of the UK, we can actually store more carbon. So if we as members of the public were willing to offset our carbon emissions through peatland restoration, that would have a number of advantages. In fact, if the public were willing to offset their carbon emissions by investing in moorland restoration, carbon management could be more profitable than managing the land for sheep or game. If we did everything we could to restore damaged peats to pristine condition, we could actually absorb and store even more carbon than we could if we just let things go wild. And the benefits of managing the land for carbon wouldn't stop here. Restoring damaged moorland could bring back important wildlife, reduce the risk of catastrophic wildfires, produce cleaner water, protect fish populations downstream, and may even in some cases reduce flooding in towns and cities. 
and if members of the public would be prepared to pay about £25 per tonne of carbon to support all the additional benefits you get from moorland restoration. This would pay back restoration costs within about 30 years. Of course, even if such a scheme were realised and the price of carbon remained buoyant, there would be major changes for upland communities if hill farmers became carbon and wildlife managers. There could be significantly fewer, but probably larger, hill farms, with those who remain in the hills increasingly having to look for alternative ways to make money. However, this scenario could also bring new economic opportunities, such as the carbon offset scheme. Upland communities could diversify into tourism, or the direct marketing of local specialist products like fell-bred lamb or venison from the deer that may prosper in the new hill forests. How do you think things are going to change then? Because everyone's now talking about we've got to look after our carbon. I think people could be becoming more aware of how precious places like these are. I mean, if you look back in history, the places like this were always known as wastes on maps and things like that. And I think we're really starting to appreciate uh, what a, a natural resource and a rare resource these areas are of moorland. We are witnessing trends that could lead to land managers primarily becoming carbon and wildlife managers in the future. For hill farmers, this could be as much about protecting and increasing the amount of carbon that's actually locked up in the soil underneath their feet as it is about reducing emissions from agriculture work. And to protect biodiversity in these internationally rare habitats, we might be more interested in what farmers don't do. Although producing food will become increasingly important in the future, of course, if we continue on the road we're currently travelling on, then we might increasingly ask those who manage our hills in the future to focus on protecting our largest carbon store and the wildlife that thrives there. Mm -hmm.